Let's talk business. This is how we're moving yours forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The South African National Space Agency recently inaugurated a new Q-band in-orbit test limited motion antenna, the latest addition to its growing number of technologically advanced antennae at its space operations facility to assist clients in successfully commissioning new satellites. Joanne Taylor reports. The new 17 million rand facility, internally funded by SANSA, comprises a 10-meter KU Direct broadcast satellite band antenna and an equipment room fitted with IoT equipment and infrastructure. It was built in response to the growing demand by satellite owners for ground facilities that are essential to test the in-orbit communications performance of new geostationary satellites. South Africa is in an ideal position to assist satellite operators in the qualification and commissioning of their new satellites, as the country has a relatively radio-quiet environment and a good geographic position. The antenna has a KU band up and down link, as well as direct broadcast satellite band uplink capability. Civil construction on the KU IoT antenna started in January, with final testing having been completed during July and August. So the, the requirement for the new antenna came about with us um getting very busy on our existing KU facility. Our existing KU band facility is used for launch and early orbit phase uh, projects, but more and more our international clients has wanted us to do uh, in-orbit tests as well, which is the process of handing over a new spacecraft from the manufacturer to the operator. So because of this load on our antenna, we decided we would uh, put up a dedicated facility for that. So the specification is really built around uh, in-orbit tests so it, uh, it's a highly calibrated antenna. It, it doesn't have the range of movement that our, our uh, traditional antenna has, but that's not required for IoT. For IoT, we need to have a, a limited motion, but highly calibrated. So that is, that is uh, why we put it up. And uh, it, it's, it's already in, in very high demand. So even though it's, it's only just been inaugurated, um, we're already uh, fully booked on it. One of these antennas typically takes around about uh, nine months to a year to put together. So it starts off with a civil project to uh, put down the foundations. Uh, these antennas need to be mounted fairly accurately and fairly sturdily uh, as it needs to point to the spacecraft at a very fine resolution. So, so it starts off with a civil project to put in a, a big concrete base. Uh, all the while the antenna is manufactured off-site, then delivered and put together and then uh, tested and calibrated. And, and so all in all, nine months to a year to put together uh, a system like this. Next for Space Operations is quite an exciting project. It's, uh, it's a development of a new satellite called EOSAT-1. It's an Earth observation satellite. We, we're well into the phase of that. It's a 372 uh, million rands that we've secured from the Department of Science and Technology. Uh, and that's going to be ramped up to about 450 million rands. It's Africa's contribution to a constellation of satellites for the African uh, continent. And um, this constellation will be taking pictures of uh, high resolution pictures of the African continent uh, for disaster management, uh, for the management of vegetation. And um, um, it's, it's, it's a big project for Santa, it requires a lot of highly skilled engineering expertise. And uh, we are also stimulating the space industry in Africa through that project. So, one of the main aims, apart from building a satellite and launching it, um, is actually to um, uh, revive uh, the satellite building industry in, in South Africa um, so that we can build more smaller satellites in the future um, that can be used and benefit everyone. At the news making headlines this week, the final batch of Husky vehicle mounted mine detector units will be delivered to the US Army, Mercedes Benz launches the M Class Guard armored vehicle in South Africa, and ultrafiltration technology significantly improves the quality of wastewater at Henkel, South Africa. DCD Protected Mobility recently announced that it was ready to deliver the final batch of Husky Vehicle Mounted Mine Detector or VMMD units to the US Army, after which its Husky VMMD build program would transition from a production to a sustainment phase. This is the end of a program that initially actually started um, in around about 1995 with a foreign comparative testing program with the US government. Um, although significant orders were only really placed from about 2005, um, We've delivered well over a thousand vehicles to the U.S. government and this is the final one. 
uh, going out today. The program with the US government is obviously transitioning from a production phase to a sustainment phase where these vehicles need to be supported over the next 20, 25 years, their full life with the US government. And also there are many opportunities with them to upgrade uh, these vehicles specifically. Mercedes-Benz has unveiled the new 2.3 million rand ML500 Guard vehicle in South Africa. The M Guard, an armoured version of the M-Class SUV, meets the requirements of vehicle resistance level 4. The ML500 Guard is, let me say, a typical Mercedes. It is a Mercedes in all, in all ways. That means the car is tested like a Mercedes. The car has been developed by Mercedes. Also the armoring has been developed by Mercedes and produced by Mercedes. So what, what you see here, and this is maybe the most important thing, is that you do not see any difference to a non-armored car. This is one of the most important targets when we armor cars. You do not want to uh, catch. Uh, you do, do not want to catch attention when you are on the road. Adhesive technology specialist and product manufacturer Henkel South Africa has set a benchmark in sustainability for the global Henkel brand by replacing its old chemical treatment plant with a new 2 million rand effluent plant that uses ultrafiltration technology in ceramic filters to treat the liquid waste from its factory. Everything below this roof structure is what, what we call the new effluent plant and everything outside of that is what the old effluent plant used to look like. Uh, so you can see it's a lot smaller than, than what it was. Uh, this plant has been designed to handle 5 cubic meters of effluent per hour, uh, which is the same capacity we had in the old plant. Uh, the old plant was a uh, traditional chemi chemical treatment plant for effluent. This new plant is based on ultrafiltration technology using ceramic filters. Um, it's run by a control unit. So it's 100% auto automated. Uh, it only needs somebody to have a look every now and then to make sure the whole process is running well. Uh, apart from that, it runs by itself. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.